So a little while ago, I made a video speculating about an upcoming puzzle game that has just now released called Viewfinder. This game has a really impressive main mechanic that allows you to overlap images onto the space around you in real time, casually warping reality to your whims. And it's shockingly well implemented to the point that it was reminding me of a modern version of the original Portal and how impressive that game was back in the day. But as I pointed out in that video, which I'll link in the cards in the description down below, I was a little worried about how well they could actually design puzzles around that mechanic. The ability to just casually take a picture of literally anything in the level and then place it wherever you wanted just seemed way too powerful of an ability, and I wasn't sure how they were going to be able to come up with meaningful puzzle mechanics based around it, let alone enough of them to last for a good few hours of playtime to justify being a full game. Well, I am extremely happy to report that I have now played the full game from start to finish, as well as completing all of the bonus levels, and that I have had a great time with it. Not only is the picture mechanic implemented flawlessly the whole way through the game, but I can confirm that they do manage to find a lot of very fun and really interesting ways to incorporate the mechanics into real puzzle design. So if you watched my last video on the game, the main thing that I was curious about was the limitations of the picture-taking mechanics. In order to make meaningful puzzles, it's often more important to consider the limitations of your mechanics more than just the new powers or abilities that they grant you. For example, with Portal, you could do a ton with the main mechanic of that series, but you can also only place portals on flat, stationary surfaces, and only certain surfaces can hold them. Not to mention that you're limited by line of sight, and you can only place one set of portals at a time. And a lot of the game's puzzles are designed around you realizing and butting heads with those limitations, and in turn having to find solutions to work around them. And it turns out that this picture-taking mechanic was a lot more limited than I initially realized from playing the demo. I mean, you could still have an insane effect on the world around you with your ability to essentially cut and paste anything on top of anything else. But, for example, one of the first mechanics that they introduce outside of the demo is the concept of wires that connect puzzle elements together. Now, this isn't exactly a novel idea on its own. I mean, almost all puzzle games involve using some sort of visual to show you that if you hit this switch, then it'll affect that door or something to that effect. But in this game, it's actually a very important mechanic with how the picture taking works. Because you see, if you try to take a picture of something and you don't fit the wire into the frame, then when you place it back down, it breaks the connection. And you can't simply try to line it up so that it connects with another wire to repower it. In fact, they use a very clever little visual to show this with how the coil inside the wire springs shut whenever it's broken. I thought that was a really great piece of visual design personally. And as a result, no matter how close you try to line it up, the wire will no longer function. And if it was previously powered, it becomes unpowered when you place it down. So now, you have to try and work and frame the image such that you will fit all of these connected puzzle elements together in order to, for it to work. And that alone adds a lot of much needed depth to the nature of the mechanics in comparison to what we saw in the demo. And there's lots of other ways that they limit the mechanics as well. For one, you don't always have access to the camera once you unlock it. Some levels aren't afraid to take it away again, or other levels may have cameras, but have them be fixed in place so that you can't just take a picture of anything. And on top of that, even when you do have full access to the camera, there's still more interesting mechanics that they layer on top of it. Sometimes you're given very limited amounts of film, or you might even need to find more film in the level, which will change how you approach the puzzle with that in mind. There's even a really trippy mechanic that they introduce later in the game, where certain types of objects are unable to be photographed somehow, and if you try to overlay a picture on top of them, they just sort of reassert themselves back on top. It's definitely weird, and I can't even imagine how they managed to implement it so smoothly, but it also acts like the dark dark walls and portal that you can't shoot on to provide hard limits on what you can and cannot interact with, and makes for some really interesting puzzles that actually had me stumped for a good while. Now, if I had to criticize some aspect of the game, 
I will say that there was one set of levels that did remind me a bit too much of Super Liminal's more gimmicky mechanics. Namely, it was a set of levels based around the idea of optical illusions that would cause objects to appear and disappear based on your perspective. I was a bit wary of this mechanic since it was a bit one note and the first time you're introduced to it, it's mostly used as a gag to kind of troll the player a little bit. You think you saw a staircase, but then it disappears, or there wasn't one, and suddenly it appears from another angle, and so on and so forth. But thankfully, in my opinion, the mechanic doesn't overstay its welcome, unlike, say, another game I could mention, and they do actually use it for a couple of real puzzles once they finish having their fun messing with the player. And once they extract the handful of good puzzles that they can get out of the mechanic, it thankfully goes away and we're able to return to the main camera mechanics that the game is much more built around, which means I'm much more easily able to appreciate the mechanic as more of just a gag in the game and laugh at it, rather than as a continued tedious annoyance. Other than that, the only other meaningful criticism I think I have for the game is that it just isn't particularly long, and as a puzzle game, it's not got a ton of replay value on top of that. I beat the whole game, including all of the optional levels, in about two play sessions that were each no more than a few hours long. According to Steam, my total playtime is at around 5 hours, and that's with me playing at a fairly casual pace and sometimes goofing off to just mess around with the mechanics. Though I will admit, I did not get every single hidden collectible that there are in the game, and so that might extend your playtime a bit if you want to go for 100%. Plus, I did also play the demo beforehand for like about an hour or so, which meant that I was already somewhat familiarized with the core mechanics, and that probably saved me some trial and error in the full game game. But, to be fair, the game is also not full priced, and of course, as is the nature of puzzle games, how long it takes you to beat it can vary greatly depending on the player. I like to consider myself pretty decent at these sorts of mind-bending puzzle games, but I did get stumped a good few times in some of the more esoteric puzzles, depending on how you usually approach games like this, it could easily last much longer. Not to mention that Portal is still one of my favorite games of all time, and that game only takes about a couple hours to get through on their first time. So, it's not actually a huge knock against the game, it definitely still has plenty of content, and I think they get a good amount of levels out of the mechanics that they introduce. And really, at the end of the day, all that this criticism really boils down to is that I wish that there was more of this game to play around with. But, I'm also glad that, like I said earlier, it doesn't seem to overstay its welcome with most of its mechanics. So overall, in my opinion, this is a grade A puzzle game. Just playing around with the main mechanic and seeing what you're able to do with it and how amazingly smoothly it's implemented is probably already worth the price of admission for a lot of people. And like I said, you do get some real brain benders out of this if you're just a fan of trying to solve difficult puzzles. So if you love puzzle games, if you just like seeing wild new mechanics, I highly recommend you give it a shot. I'll even provide a link to the Steam page in the description if you want try it out for yourself. And with that said, I think that brings this video to a close, but as usual, I'm always happy to continue the conversation down in the comments below. I'm curious to hear about the other people's thoughts on Viewfinder, if you've played it yourself, and if you're still on the edge about trying it, maybe talking about it might push you over. And if you like what you see and you want to see me make more videos like this one, make sure to leave me a like and a subscribe to stay up to date on when I release more videos like this one. But until next time, I'll see you all later.